As public advocate Jamani Williams also addressing this very issue yesterday. Take a listen. The people want to know why NYCHA families have no heat and no say in the changes to the authority. The people want to know why we don't commit to a truly progressive affordable housing agenda when 4,000 New Yorkers are sleeping on the streets tonight, nearly 70,000 in shelters, while luxury apartments remain vacant. All right, uh, to talk about this is Jamani Williams, obviously, here. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's get to that, because that's really the heart of a lot of this, is affordable housing. You, you talk about NYCHA. You talk about these big high-rises being built and remaining empty. So how do you balance that? I mean, how do you tackle affordable housing when there's such a great divide? So, one, I, I always want to point to people that this is a pre-Trump issue. Mm -hmm. And this state and this city are run by Democrats. And so uh, I don't want to blame this solely on Trump. These are Democrats that we have been failing on this issue for a very long time just because I guess we didn't have the political courage to move forward. Um, so the last administration uh, kind of made it worse. They lit a fire. Uh, in terms of, and this administration has poured fuel on that fire. And so we've had people getting tax breaks to build luxury housing. Mm -hmm. um, the city council last term passed a piece of legislation that allowed people to rezone the uh, uh, entire parts of the city that created more uh, market rate housing than it did so-called affordable housing. So we have to be focused and say we don't just need affordable housing, we need income targeted right. housing. But how do you do that? It's simple. You just need the political courage to do it. Now, we I want to give some credit to, to, to Albany and, and the advocates who pushed Albany. We made some changes on the state level that are hopefully going to uh, keep some folks in their home. But what we have to make sure now is, one, that we preserve as much affordability as we can. That's the number one issue. Uh, and second, when we're building, we need to be building deeply income targeted affordable housing. We need a moratorium on all rezoning. So whose job is it to do that? Whose uh, job uh, is it to say, okay, let's do this. Let's move the forward city. on this path. The, the city needs to do that. And um, I'm hoping that if we don't have the moratorium on uh, um, the rezonings, we have a bill now that I talked about in speech as well, that we're asking for a racial impact study mm -hmm. to be done before any rezoning happens. Because we know for a fact from many of the ones beforehand that the people who get pushed out look a lot different than the people who are able to come in. And that, and was, that was a topic this week with gentrification and Eric mm. Adams. Let me yeah. get your thoughts on that real quick and your thoughts on the comments of go back to Ohio, go back to Iowa. I, I think it was a very bad way to talk about a very, very, very important issue. Uh, and now the issue that I believe he was trying to talk about was gentrification. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to go back. Uh, everyone is welcome in New York City. Uh, and I also don't want to compare it to previous migrations. Previous migrations happened because people didn't want to live next to the people who were next to them. Uh, the migration that's happening now is that people simply can't afford to live in the neighborhoods where they help build up. And so we want to make sure that everybody has a place to live. And that's not what's happening here. And then, and that's the failure of the government. I think a lot of times people think it's, it's, the, it's the people who are moving into the neighborhood but it is a hand-in-hand -hand issue with the right. developers who are building in that neighborhood, making it unaffordable. But I also want to talk about something else you highlighted yesterday, which was going after worse, the bad landlords that are out there, right? We have a problem. <clears throat> Obviously, NYCHA is one of them. You've talked about the worst landlord list, but now you want to have an act. What would that act do? Well, we want to make sure that we're not just putting out the list every year, that we're actually trying to do something about it. And we want to work with our partners in the city council uh, to really go after the worst of the worst by law. And so there are things like self-certification where uh, landlords are saying, look, I fixed this, but they actually haven't. We have to stop self-certification. We have to do things like raise the fines on people who lie about uh, fixing those things. We have to fix the transparency because right now it's a maze of things trying to figure out who actually owns the building. Right, which is difficult, right? So another thing that you really pointed out, you allowed people to stand up and speak about their issues, the ones that matter to them most. And, and there was one immigrant that had quite the story. Let's take a look at what he had to say. People rose up to fight back and to prevent my deportation. And I'm still here. But so many others are not so lucky. And every six months, including tomorrow morning, I have to go to ICE not knowing if I will walk back out. New York City should be a sanctuary city. So what do you say to someone like that? Well, I'll be with Ravi, uh, who, Ravi Ragbear, who uh, many From of us Trinidad, got, right? yes, got arrested stopping his deportation, uh, I believe it was uh, two years ago. Uh, and in about an hour, he'll be checking back in with ICE. And this is how he lives uh, every six months, but some people don't have uh, the notoriety that his case does, mm -hmm. and they're even uh, worse off. We should have a sanctuary city. Uh, we have one of the better cities, but we don't. And to quote one of my colleagues, 
we actually need a fortress city. And mm. So we have some laws here that uh, do allow people to interact with the criminal justice system in a way that is, they don't need to. Uh, and where I think we're a little better at certain things, once they step out of the five boroughs, they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of parts in this state uh, where they will not be safe. And I think we have to do a lot a lot better at making sure that we aren't coordinating with ICE from the courthouse to the streets. Yeah, it's a very important topic here. Just just briefly on that act, the Worst Landlord Act, is there a timeline? Do you have a timeline of when you'd like to get it into the city council, get it passed, and start holding people actually accountable? So when you put forth a piece of legislation, uh, which we'll be introducing soon uh, with our colleagues, uh, you always want it done tomorrow. Uh, of course. Uh, but the fact of the matter is I don't put timelines on it because I've seen how the sausage is made in the past a decade. Uh, we want to do it expeditiously, but mm -hmm. it does take time to get through the legislative process to make sure we get it right and make sure that all folks who have concerns and questions, uh, they get answered. I can talk to you about that for half an hour. So yeah. when it does, when you have more information, come on back. We'll talk more about it. These are big issues you're trying to tackle. Thank you for joining us.